This is a talk by someone who's very recently joined Mercury. We're very excited to have, obviously, who probably most of you have heard of, Gabriela Gonzalez. Gabriela, take it away. Thank you. All right, so recently I've been programming, creating a new programming language because I'm back on my bullshit again. And uh, so the thing that's unique about this language is that it is a programming language that is a superset of JSON and it's typed. And as far as I know, n there's no other language that has those three features. Most of the other languages are either not a superset of JSON, not typed, or not a programming language. <laughs> And so uh, this, so the project here is to create, uh, so I'm, I can actually type expressions in this programming language, and this browser is gonna attempt to convert those to idiomatic web pages, or in some cases, actually interactive web forms. So it's gonna be hard to type with, oopsies, okay, one hand, but I'll do my best. So anything I type here, so obviously JSON, scalar literals will show up here. That's not very interesting. Uh, but if we put something like, for example, like true, it's gonna try and convert that to a checkbox, for example. And if I say create a list of Boolean values, it'll create a list of checkboxes that match. And so let's, again, here, I'm gonna put this down just for a second. Great idea. <laughs> All right, so now let's do this. So here I've created a function which takes an input record and returns an output record that basically whose result is the X field of the input record or with the Y field of the input record. And so what this does is it actually looks at the type of the expression and infers the type and generates the web page based off of the inferred type. So here, for example, if I have X and Y, so like here, it's gonna be the or of those two. And another thing you can do in this language is you can reference other expressions by their URL endpoint. So, and it'll just load them as if they were code. So, so for example, if I open up api.github.com, it'll take that JSON and it'll convert it to idiomatic HTML. So if we combine that with the previous feature, we can basically, we can store functions anywhere and turn them into useful forms. So let me actually just quickly jump to one last example. Uh, how much time do I have left, Janie? <laughs> okay, excellent. We should have plenty of time here. But let's do this one right here. So here we have a grace function which is stored on some GitHub gist. And if I import it, it generates this web form right here. So like I can put in some taxable income. This is for the US. And then I can specify, like, okay, what's my filing status? And it'll adjust as a result of that. And if you look at this URL right here, it basically contains grace code, but the important thing here is there is no presentation logic. This is just a pure mathematical function, just like records, lists, Boolean values, strings, arithmetic, but nothing involving like HTML or posts or form submissions. So basically the runtime just takes care of that for you. So this is kind of like ideal for somebody who like wa just wants to create a web form but doesn't really know too much about like how to create a web page or anything about HTML, just like take this code and make it work somehow. And it does some, some pretty smart stuff. So for example, let's say I want to concatenate two lists of Boolean values. So it'll actually create two interactive inputs for lists and it'll concatenate them. You can see the output updating in response to that. And so also, so you can have, a, you can actually, here's a list of all the built-ins in the language. Oh, one thing I forgot to mention is that, um, so I didn't actually create this language to be a language that's used directly, but rather it's actually intended to be a starting point for you to build your own programming languages too. So it's designed to be easy to fork, and there's a reference implementation, basically it's like a reference implementation of a language. One second. Uh, I probably should have opened this ahead of time, but 
Uh, here's where you'll find it. And basically, you can think of this as like, it's a clear reference implementation of best practices for implementing an interpreted language in Haskell. And uh, so if you fork this and you customize it to your liking, you can actually, there's a Nix expression which lets you build a website identical to the one that I just showed you, but for your own custom language too. So it's, if you just want to like get started creating your own programming language and you want a good basis point, then I think you might be interested in this project here. And that's the end of my presentation. Yes, go ahead. Uh, the short answer is I, I strongly believe that the natural conclusion of programming is to move towards more mathematical, simpler mathematical DSLs and pushing more implementation complexity into the runtime. So here it's just like, in this case, the runtime is build me a web form. That's like a detail I don't want to really have to think about. Just do something sensible. Uh, and so, yeah, I'm always looking for ways to like take pure mathematical expressions and do interesting things with them. So it's like to make an analogy to web programming, like you, in web programming, you often separate the presentation from like the, whatever they call the non-presentation bit. So this is kind of like that. So the code right here is the, is the actual business logic. And I want something else to just handle the presentation separately from the code. Mm. Yes? Mm. Uh, Yeah, so Grace is a language that supports both row polymorphism and polymorphic variants. So it can do pretty sophisticated inference on expressions. Mm. Oh, yeah, go ahead. Uh, which, the, like the very first example I gave, or? So yeah, let's go back to this very quickly. I'll just do a simplified version of this. So basically, it's working it backwards. So it says, like, since you accessed the X field of input, one, it must be a record. Two, it must be a record containing a field named X. And three, because you ORed it with another value, that field X must have type bool. So basically, the type it infers for this expression right here is essentially that. Go ahead. What does the typer look like? Uh, let's, let's do an example of that. Uh, let's see. Oh, that's right. Oopsies, sorry. Here, let's just do a simple one. Oh, sorry, one more question, sorry. <laughs> Go ahead. Yeah, it's an interpreted language. And all this code is running in the browser. Like, there's, no, there's actually no server involved here other than the ser server that initially served the initial version of the web page. So, so this is, yeah. Uh, no, this is actually, the code for this is inside the main Grace repository. This is, so this is not a fork of Grace, this is Grace proper. Yeah, so there's also like a command line REPL which you can use for non-HTML interaction with the language too. Hmm. All right, I think I have to hand it off. <laughs>